We're in the final days of a chance to get a clickbait plushie, and we need your help to hit that pre-order minimum for production. If you even a little bit want a clickbait plushie, get it now. Link is in the description. Bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. People want to know where my stuff comes from. Well, a lot of it's from Bai.jp. I can shop Japanese stores and bid on Japanese auctions, and Bai handles everything. Translations, currency conversions. A decade ago, I would have never dreamed it would be this easy to have things like this on display. Just window shop, just look, you're gonna be amazed. Make your new account with the link in my description and you'll have 2,000 yen free in case something catches your eye. Thank you, Bai.jp, for sponsoring this playtime. Playtime! Yay! So currently in Japan, there's a promotion for what's called the SJHU, or the Shin Japan Heroes Universe. This is a very, very loosely connected group of films, all based on huge properties in Japan. All four projects are reboots from the mind of Hideaki Anno, all with the name Shin in the title. The word Shin signifies newness or true, amongst other things. 2016 saw the release of Anno's Shin Godzilla. In 2021, Anno released Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, 32%. <laughs> Thrice upon a time, but this literal translation is Shin Evangelion Theatrical Edition. 2022 saw the release of Shin Ultraman, written by Anno, and in 2023, Shin Kamen Rider was released, written and directed by Anno. And this is your Shin Universe, which has been promoted a number of different ways. And it's cool! It's cool seeing these four characters together! I love a good crossover! And what I- wait, what? What do they do- they don't do that? What is that? Yeah, this is the Shin Universe robot. Some kind of robo combination of the four characters. Because absolutely everything in Japan needs to combine to make a bigger thing. This was released as a toy by Bandai. You could put me in a room and give me all the cocaine in the world, and I still wouldn't dream this thing up. How does this even work? Was Godzilla a robot this whole time? This is Titan Tech levels of body horror. It just doesn't make sense! This is a new release in Japan, and it's available in the States either through Big Bad Toy Store, or you can use sites like Bai to snag one. But it's not cheap. They had the nerve to show us this, and then follow it up with, oh yeah, that's gonna be over $300. Who do they think would actually pay that much for such an insane concept? All right, so here's the SJHU Project Outer Box. And inside we got our nicer Shin Robot packaging. Let's just take this off here and there's your box art. It's a regular old product shot of the toy. And we can get a glimpse of the characters individually on the side. But the good stuff is on the back. Shin Robot, you didn't have to go so hard. This art is awesome. I really like it a lot. But it's what's on the inside that counts, and for $344, this had better be some Soul of Chagokin level mastery. I'm talking die-cast premium quality. Oh no. Well, here's Kamen Rider, just this little guy on a bike. He's not removable. This is the Kamen Rider figure. The wheels spin, and you can make him do little tricks. And he comes with a very little plastic piece that helps him stand up. Here's Shin Godzilla. Oh man, this is just plastic, man. This is a Playmates toy, and not even Playmates at their best. I do like the dorsal plate paint application. The shiny crimson looks good, I'll give it that. And you stick his tail on and boom, Playmates Shin Godzilla. He starts looking a little rougher on a closer inspection. From the front, he's looking more like Slim Godzilla. His legs can move and you can actually make him have a seat. Hey Ryder, did you hear? We got someone to actually pay full price! His jaw opens and closes, his arms can move a little, his legs articulate, his ankles can turn, this can- oh. Alright, I'm guessing that's part of the transformation. And this too. Either that or this is Shin Godzilla's fifth form. Eva O1's looking a bit stiff here. At ease, soldier. Shin Ultraman's the same story. But what might surprise you is that these two figures actually have some pretty decent movement. And we'll get to that in a second. Right now, I just want to show you them all together. I do like how the scaling at least evokes accuracy. 
Alright, so here's Ultraman, and his arms and legs can spread out, and you can make him look like he's doing the robot. Technically speaking, we have shoulder, elbow, wrist, leg, knee, and ankle articulation. The head can turn too. It's a lot! But even with all this movement, I can't say this measures up to something like an SH Figure Arts or even a Mezco Ultraman figure. You can swap his hands. He's got alternate hands. You can make him do a little chop chop. And there's a Spacium Ray accessory with a little stand that he can go pew. And again, Eva is the same story. Same articulation. You can swap the open hands. Here's another little stand, and this one goes for this AT field that will become a shield. Like, are they okay figures on their own? Yeah, they're okay. Eva visually passes the test a little better, in my opinion. But there's just the dark cloud of the price hanging over this that I, I feel like I can't enjoy them for what they are. Whatever, let's just merge them all. Oh god, this is a lot of directions. This is not gonna be easy. Or fun. First, you just start ripping Godzilla apart. You just, like, you just yank parts off of him. Then his head moves down to his chest. And now he looks like he's plotting world domination. You move some parts here, you very slightly open these things. They don't come out a lot. Eva's tougher. First, you've got to get these two shoulder parts off, and it is a pain. Every time I try, the whole arm pops off. I cruised through Godzilla, but I was stuck on this one for a little bit. Okay, I got him off. And what you do next is tear him in half. Don't worry, Darth Maul survived it. You open the back up and you pull out this tiny arm and hand, and now he looks like Gizmo Duck. Wonderful. And with the back open, you're then supposed to tuck both arms in there, and it has to be perfect or else you won't be able to close the back again. Which begs the question, why don't you just take the arms off? They, they pop off real easily. Whatever, I'll do it their way. Legs are easier, you just snap them together. You turn the feet back to expose a connector peg, turn it upside down, and that's the robot's leg. And guess what? Same story with Ultraman. You Darth Maul him, open his back, shove his arms and hands in there, flip the feet. Kamen Rider's transformation was really awkward for a toy that's so small. But look, it's the robot's face. And you get Godzilla's feet back because now they're getting new legs. And they pretty easily attach to create this Jim Henson nightmare. Snap the arms on. Again, easy, not hard. Then you gotta make the poor captured souls face forward. Look at them. Missing limbs and all stitched together like a horror film. There's a peg on top. I can already tell it needs to be longer than it is. And Kamen Rider goes there take this apart, slip Godzilla's head through it. This feels wrong. I don't know why, like, I feel like I'm gonna get demonetized for showing this for some reason. I don't know why, you just look at it. You take those dorsal plates from before and you stick the spacium beam to make a pretty cool sword, I have to admit. This piece goes on here like a shield, and the sword goes in this hand. Ultraman keeps popping open. I even removed the hands, and it's still an issue. Oh, and those Eva shoulder pieces need to go back on. Not easy. The discarded tail is used too, because we let nothing go to waste. This opens up to become a barbershop mustache! And you put it on the back to become, I don't know, the robot's wings? Immediate pain points, Ultraman still will not stay closed. I wound up removing the arms entirely, like I suggested earlier. That did the trick, and it was easier than shoving the arms in his back. I don't get why that's not the instruction. Pain point two, the head is a mess. There's just so much going on over here, and I don't like that you can barely see the robot's face. And Common Rider easily pops off because the peg holding him on is too short. Pain point three, these pieces will not stay out. Every time I fix something somewhere else on the toy, one of these goes back in, and sometimes I don't even notice for a while. I have no beef with the design itself. I mean, like I said, the head's kind of weird, and it does kind of look like Kamen Rider is just on the top controlling the entire robot by himself. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the case. But design-wise, I like it enough because it makes no sense. And you know me, something like this is, am is amazing to me. It's so campy and schlocky, and you kind of love it again because it's just so out there. But at the end of the day, this feels like a toy that's $50 Tops, and I'm being generous with that. Definitely not a hundred dollar value. Absolutely not over three hundred dollar value. I've 
just never seen such a mismatched price since I started this show. It is not worth that price at all. I wish I had my money back. I could have bought a lot of bootleg advent calendars with that money. So here's Shin Robot next to Playmates Titan Techs, which have better form and function and cost hundreds of dollars less! Here's some other Godzillas for more scale, a Trendmasters, an Imperial, a New Empire Playmates, and a NECA. Oh my god, I try so hard to always look for the best in things, but this thing is so overpriced that I feel scammed. I had to keep checking to make sure Bandai really made this and it wasn't some type of bootleg operation. Ah, uh, so I would recommend you not buy this toy. Unless you see it for like hundreds of dollars less. And now's a good time to bring up my Patreon, where you could support this channel and access our Discord. Now would be a really, really good time to join my Patreon. I don't know. I mean, look, the the gimmick is so out there that it definitely gets my attention. And it's just a shame that the gimmick and the quality itself just don't come near matching that price point. And it's not like I could play with it a lot. It doesn't balance. It's hard to stand. It falls apart too easily. Honestly, I just I'd really rather have a soft vinyl version of this robot. Anyway, there's not much more to say. I really don't feel like taking this thing apart again. And I probably won't for a long, long time. Feel free to share your comments below, and go easy on me, I really took one for the team here. Till next time.